What is up, Saints? I'm back with another Christian Man Reacts video. Where if you've been watching, you know the intent of my content is to present good and wholesome entertainment. And whether or not I do, that's up to you. Alright, so if you've been watching, you, you know the uh, the dark navy blue hat here represents false teaching. Uh, well, the hat don't represent that. Me wearing the hat means we're about to do a false teaching video. The, the hat's actually a really good hat, but um, nonetheless, uh, we're, we're going to be looking at some false teaching here. And um, not one of my favorite things to do. Like, I don't enjoy doing these. And and so you might ask, then, well, why are you doing it? And um, I think it's 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 uh, a you know hoping to entertain here in a, in a wholesome way. Uh, B maybe we can give some insight onto these false teachers. And then C and and probably the most prevalent reason is that. Um, if I'm going to call out false teachers, and I may have explained this before, but if, if I'm going to call them out, I better know what they have to say. I, be, I better not just be going off a hearsay. You know, so-and-so told me this person's no good, and based on the way they look and what I see on TV, I'm going to believe that and I'm going to call them a false teacher. If I'm going to call somebody a false teacher, I better know what they're doing that's false so I can expose that. And so the hope is through, through doing these little clips here, I can at least get a little bit of insight I've also got a collection of books, um, a section on my bookshelf I call the Heresy Row, where I got um, what I would uh, assume are false teachers, and I plan on reading through those, uh, you know, a little bit at a time and, and, and gaining some insight. You know, I looked into some Seventh-day Adventists, uh, learned a few things, learned that they are in fact heretical, um, uh, mainly because they deny the eternality of hell, uh, which I believe does put you into the realm of heresy. Uh, they've also got some legalistic leanings, uh, whether or not they call those things salvific, like the diet scheme and whatnot. I don't know, but they got weird interpretation on the mark of the beast as well. So, um, read a Rick Warren book. Honestly, I couldn't really say anything bad about it. You know, I read that uh, the 40 day book and uh, heard a lot of people bad mouthing it. I myself had bad mouthed it before, but. Um, didn't see anything overtly heretical. That's that's not to say that, that Rick Warren is somebody to be trusted and relied upon. It just means there's further research to be done in that particular book. You know, it was, um, there were some unfortunate things that, that I didn't like, but nothing that I could call heresy. Um, so so uh, I, I guess without further knowledge, I couldn't put him in the camp of a false teacher. I could say based on what I've heard and I, and and from what I understand about the guy, I wouldn't trust. Um, but further research is needed, and so so that's the hope with these videos, and 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 that's actually what we're going to be getting into here today. Um, so it, it's somebody that I'm not familiar with. I've I've never heard the gentleman speak. I've heard other people say bad things about him, and just based on the look, um, the the his his attire and his uh, uh, mannerisms and whatnot, I'm skeptical and then suspicious of the man and would tend to lean very heavily, like if, if there's a radar that says false teacher or biblical teacher, my radar is way over here. So it would take, um, not saying we're gonna hear anything heretical in this video, I don't know, that's what we're doing it for, but it would take quite a bit of convincing. I would have to hear good, true solid biblical exegesis and gospel explanation for him to move over this way and so um you know that's what we're going to look at here and see what he has to offer uh based on the title of the video it looks pretty innocent it looks like maybe maybe we get something good out of it i don't know um but anyways uh well you know I, i'm ready to go i got the polar seltzer uh cherry pomegranate flavor so uh without further ado let's jump into this all right, so mystery revealed. You can see it here. The, the person I was talking about is Joseph Prince. And uh, the, the title of this video is Healing of the Leper in Matthew 8. Um, the first thing, I always wonder, do these guys come up with fake names? Are they like rappers that come up with stage names? Because they've always got some sort of, or not always, but it seems like there's always some sort of materialistic uh, uh, showmanship in their names, like Creflo Dollar and Joseph Prince. Um, so, 
I don't know. Maybe it's just those two. <laughs> but it just seems suspicious right off the bat there. And, you know, maybe that's his real name. And I'm just reading too much into it. But um, I don't believe in coincidences. So I believe, you know, even if it is his real name, it's the Lord saying, you know, pay close attention. Um, you know, uh, be watchful. Be discerning. Or to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. So anyways, uh, this here looks like it's an animation video, so we should get some pictures with this, and it's called The Healing of the Leper <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 8. Um, so let's uh, give it a shot here and see what he's got to say. Let me check my volume here make sure we're good to go on that front. All right. Chapter 8 opens by saying, When Jesus finished the sermon, when Jesus came down the mountain, the multitudes followed him. I always thought he came down this way where the people were, but if he came down... All right, so the second thing is I'm always skeptical of people who dress to the nines. Got the jewelry, got the real fancy suit. Now, I've mentioned that before. Ain't nothing wrong with wearing a suit, but there's, there's a distinction between a normal business gentlemanly suit and a fashion showmanship type suit. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical right off the bat here again, but but that's my overcritical mind, maybe. Let's give the guy the benefit of the doubt here. Um, if he is one of God's preachers, you know, I certainly don't want to speak ill of him, so. In that way, then the phrase, the multitudes followed him, doesn't make sense. Because he's going towards them, right? If I go towards you, you cannot follow me, right? But if I go another way, that's when you follow me. So he must have gone on this way. So he went on this way, and I was walking this way, and all of a sudden the Lord arrested me. I saw a huge rock on the side, or a pile of rocks on the side. Hold on here. What just happened? What's he talking about? I thought he was talking about Matthew 8, and now he's talking about I saw? Is he talking about a vision? A dream? What's he talking about? Um, th that ought to set off red flags, too. Anytime somebody says... The Lord told me, or I saw, um, or I had a dream. Um, not to say that the Lord doesn't give dreams, that he might tell you something in a dream, or that the Lord speaks to you through the, the prompting of the Holy Spirit and your day-to-day -day encouragement, or, or you know, something like that. But um, I would say that that's... Um, not the common way that that God uses preachers. Uh, preachers are, are given the word. A prophet speaks the word of God, and we have the full canon here. Um, so while in your your day to day life, the 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 unction of the Spirit may may give you promptings and may may guide you. When it comes to preaching, it's going to be the word, not let me teach you something from my vision. Um, so let's uh, see where he's going with this. Like, and there was other slabs of stone all across the area, strewn across the area, and the Lord began to give me a, an inner vision and a beautiful story of the leper. And I began to see the leper could have hidden under one of these rocks. So I look at the rock here, and I look at where Jesus would have stood up here, and I began to realize that he would have seen Jesus without the multitude seeing him. He could have heard Jesus without the multitudes. You know, detecting him. So I, I wondered, what did he hear during the time? Which part of the Sermon on the Mount do you reckon he heard? Maybe he heard Jesus say, Look at the birds of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, yet your heavenly Father takes care of them. Are you not of more value than the birds? And I could see a bird come right to where his rock was, where he was hiding and chirping, almost like telling him, Why are you so worried? You are of more value than I am. And yet God feeds me. He will take care of you. Right? Um, so a good preacher will use word pictures to, to draw out a scenario. Like some people learn that way. They learn visually. So a good preacher by way of analogy or... or um, just to uh, just to paint a picture Jesus did it when he said you know um, the gospel of or the kingdom of heaven is like and then he would paint a picture or 
uh, when when you go forth and preach, you're like a man throwing seeds on good soil, hard soil, thorny soil, so on and so forth. So the, the but there's a dis, there's a subtle distinction between teaching that way by drawing from the scriptures and using a word picture to explain them, and just um, offering fluff like and so it's hard. It, can't tell which way he's going with this yet um there are some red flags there there's um you know this leper hiding in the rock that's not biblical you can't draw that from the scriptures that's that's um what's the word i'm looking for that's uh uh inference he's he's inferring he, he's um saying using his imagination um which could be okay but also dangerous like like well let, let's just see where he's going here right, right. So, so just, just imagine, imagine a leper not being, being touched for the longest, longest time we don't know how long he, he probably, probably has loved ones a baby that has grown a few years or whatever but you know he's never touched them and he's never been touched I leave the story the video and uh, also when we did this video I was uh, wanting to really present the beauty of my Lord the way I saw him the way he revealed it to me the Holy Spirit showed me about Jesus in that story and it confirmed everything topography topography must be accurate in other words Jesus facing the people and going this way the mountains will follow him he healed the leper before the multitudes came. In other words, the multitudes did not see a leper. They saw a cleansed man. There's no need to stone him. Right? And not only that, this location goes straight to Capernaum. And the next miracle was a centurion servant being healed in Capernaum. So everything is in line. Okay? And then um, uh, two encountered night services ago. You all remember I sang a spontaneous song in the spirit? And that music came from heaven, came from God, right? I, I, it's not something that, that uh, you know, uh, we have written a song about or whatever, but it came spontaneously to me for the encounter night. And I sang it out on the encounter night in the spirit. And we used that music for this video, right? So sit back, dim the lights, enjoy. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. One thing I've always pondered about is like, with the multitude so big, like, did the people in the back have a hard time hearing Jesus? So it's kind of cool to think about him sitting up on a hill like that, like, just the, the, the range of his voice would just carry. You know, and like, I think I heard it, I think what caused me to think about that the first time was like, I heard George Whitfield could be heard for a mile or something like that. So just a big booming voice, you know, and so like if, it, and often Jesus taught, I think in the scriptures talks about him being on a hill where he went out on the boat and stood on the lake. So if you can just visualize a crowd of 5,000, 10,000, whatever it was, and him speaking to them, like the visual helps um, understand that a little bit more. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If God is going to go to see the grass of the field, and the grass of the The floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Side so note, that's probably not what Jesus looked like. He said he was just an average man, he didn't stand out. The scriptures talk about how it's a shame for men to have long hair. I doubt he had long hair. see anything wrong with that um i suppose you know you, you, like christian movies will often take artistic freedom um to 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 fill in the lines in between the scriptures to show like what what could have occurred um like in jesus's early life or or um uh what's that there's that new series um oh, i can't remember the name of it but um uh, it's an eight-part series uh, about the the apostles as they're being called to Jesus, and um, they take some artistic freedom and, and fill in like what they think could have. They speculate what could have been occurring, and I suppose as long as you're not teaching doctrine, there's no real harm in that. Um, as as long as you're not saying this is what the scriptures teach, if you if you're drawing things that aren't in the scriptures, so. I, th I think with the artistic freedom, I didn't see anything wrong with that. Um, as a matter of fact, it was it was it was pretty um, emotionally powerful. It's a it's a compelling image to see the leper healed like that. So, um, based off of that, I would say. The meter comes this way a little bit, not in the sense that it, I need to hear what the man teaches, what and specifically what he teaches about the gospel. Um, but there was nothing heretical in that. Um, there were some uh, issues when he, when he was speaking before the video that that caused slight um, alarms to to raise slight. Um, Warnings to say, hey, pay more careful attention. Be be discerning here. Um, so, 
Um, what do I say about Joseph Prince? Uh, nothing bad yet. <laughs> Why do I say yet? It's because I got in the back of my head. People told me this man's a false teacher. People I trust, people I care about, you know. So um, I'm just going to say we'll, we'll leave this one up for further discussion, further insight. Um, not sure if I got one of his books on my shelf or not. I might. Um, I'll probably get one, though, to do some further research. And uh, Lord willing, at some point in the future here, we'll, we'll come back around to Joseph Prince and, and get some more on, on what he teaches. Um, but so far, nothing in that video that I could say was, was wrong. And, and it was a good, um, art, uh, a good video with artistic freedom, um, showing the beauty of, of the, the leper being cleansed. Um, so um, I, I enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes in the future here. Anyways, I guess that's what I got for you guys. Um, until next time, I love you guys, and we'll talk later.